All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at this problem over here on the left. This time we've got two generators in parallel, followed by a transformer. You'll notice the secondary voltage this time around is 220 kV, just to change things up. It's got an impedance of 4.6%. We have a line impedance of 4 plus J9 ohms, once again, and a fault at this bus down here. So let's start. We're going to use the MVA method. Uh, we're going to start by converting all of our values into their fault contributions. So starting with, we'll call this G1 and G2 from left to right. So starting with G1, we can say SF G1 is going to equal 55 MVA divided by the impedance, 5.6%. Next, for SG2, we have 50 MVA divided by 5.4%. Then moving down the line, we've got a transformer, SFX, we'll call it. That's 45 MVA divided by 4.6%. And then last, our line impedance, we'll call that S, SFZ. That's going to be the voltage at the impedance is 22 kV. So 22 kV squared divided by the impedance in ohms, 4 plus J9 ohms. And again, this is just the apparent power formula, which just says power is equal to V squared over Z. That's all that is. All right, let's use our calculator. We have for the first one, SFG1, 55 MVA divided by 5.6%. It's a fault contribution of 982.14 MVA. Next, SF2, SFG2. We've got 50 MVA divided by an impedance of 5.4%, excuse me. Gives us a parent power contribution of 925. We'll say 93 MVA. Next, for our transformer, we've got 45 MVA divided by an impedance of 4.6%. That gives us a fault contribution of 978.26 MVA. Last, for that line impedance, we've got 220 kV squared. I'm not using units, so I'm going to remember that kV squared will equal to M. So kV squared divided by the impedance of 4 plus J9. So that's J9. That's going to be a whopping 4,914.28 MVA. And once again, we're only concerned with the magnitude. We're going to neglect the angle. All right, now that we've got all of our power contributions from each element, let's take a look at the diagram and see how they're going to add up. So if the fault's down here, we know that these two generators are in parallel. And then after that, we've got this transformer and this line impedance in series. So since we're dealing with fault power contribution, we know they add up opposite of resistors. So what we're going to do here is these two are actually going to just add. So we're going to add these two right here. And then since that will be in series with this transformer in this line, we're going to use the reciprocating sums method. So we're going to do that one, and then finally that one. So it's going to look like this. Define SF total. We're going to have 982.14 MVA plus 925.93 MVA. Okay, that's going to give us, let's see, 982.14 plus 925.93. Okay. That's 1908.7. So I'm going to just go ahead and write it down here. Give us more room. 1908.7 MVA. Okay. Now we're going to use the reciprocating sum method with the transformer value. That's this value right here, okay? So we have 978.26 MVA. We're gonna multiply them and then divide by the sum. So I'm gonna go ahead and store the first one to X. I'm gonna say 978.26, store that to Y, make it a little easier on ourselves. 
So now I've got x times y divided by x plus y. That's going to give us 646. So 646 points. Call that 70 MVA. And then last, we're going to do it in parallel with the line impedance contribution. That's this value right here. So last is going to be 4914.28 MVA. So I'm going to store this last answer to x, replacing my x value. That's this one right here. Then I'm going to store the line impedance to y. So 4914.28, store that to y. And then once again, we have x times y divided by the sum x plus y. And that's going to give us a total parent power contribution. I'm going to write it right here just because we're running out of room. But I will make it, I will wipe the board. So that's going to give us a total of 571.49 MVA. And that is our SF total, SF. So let me clean things up a little bit and then we will continue. All right, so this is our total fault power, right? So at this fault, that's the total amount of volt amps at that location. So all we have to do to find the short circuit current value or our fault current magnitude is use our three phase power formula. So we can say the current is going to equal 571.49 MVA divided by square root three times the line voltage at the fault. And that line voltage is going to be 220 kV. So let's see what we get for our fault current or our short circuit current. So we already have the MVA value here on our calculator. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the fraction button, second answer, and then divided by square root 3 times 220. Now I'm not using any units on the calculator, but I know MVA divided by KV is going to equal what? It's going to equal to KA, won't it? So I'm going to write down KA here so I don't forget. I'm going to hit enter. And I've got, we'll say that's an even 1.50 kiloamps. So that means this fault right here, we have a total amount of current that's 1,500 amps total. And that is our I short circuit or our fault current. All right, let's solve the same problem using the per unit method and verify that we get the same answer. So stay tuned.